Yeah, so hi, so I'm Ben, uh, co-founder of Crosser, a London-based startup. And I'm going to talk today about using Neo4j to build graph-based features for recommendation systems and drug discovery. I'm sure many people watching um, have currently have an active Netflix subscription or have had a Netflix subscription in the past and have benefited from the recommendation system. So when you're on the Netflix homepage and uh, they surface new films, new TV shows uh, for you to watch, they've used a recommendation system to make that prediction. And the way they do that is uh, they look at your user attributes uh, and features for you as a user and then use those to recommend new film and TV shows. That might be, for example, uh, what genre of film and TV you generally watch. Do you watch TV shows? Do you watch films? What kind, how long of the content do you like? Which actors do you like? And all that kind of stuff. And they fill, feed that into an algorithm. And they can then provide a recommendation score for, for all the films and TV shows on Netflix uh, based on how likely you might enjoy that show and then surface to you the... Uh, the shows that you're most likely to enjoy. And they've had a lot of success with uh, this kind of system with 80% of subscribers choosing new content uh, using Netflix's recommendation engine. How can that uh, same system be applied in drug discovery? Well, scientists have a similar, similar issue as the people at Netflix and that they have tens of thousands of potentially druggable genes and they're looking to find which genes could be involved in a particular disease so they can target those genes and then hopefully cure that disease. Initially, when we're looking at these tens of thousands of genes, they might apply uh, a genome-wide high throughput screen, such as a Christmas screen, uh, but even the output of that will get you down to, can, can get you down to thousands of genes, 2,000, 3,000 genes. And at that point, a scientist then has to uh, triage or evaluate all of the genes uh, in that list based on their biological evidence, uh, literature evidence, clinical evidence, to try and review those genes as potential uh, targets for drugs to cure that disease. And this is where recommendation systems uh, can really be beneficial in drug discovery uh, because those biological, clinical, and uh, commercial, and all these other features can be, can be used to prioritize and rank those genes to get you down to a short list in the 20 or 30, 40 genes where a scientist can then review those genes, uh, saving months of time, not having to review thousands of genes. Our recommendation systems have already seen uh, great success in drug discovery. Uh, examples below uh, uh, in silicon medicine, uh, recently published in Frontiers, a great paper on the identification of novel genes for ALS and AstraZeneca uh, gene recommender systems for EGFR drug resistance. Why use graph-based features in Neo4j for a gene recommender system? And the reason is because biology naturally conforms to a network. So inside the cell, uh, molecular biology is, is naturally uh, a system, a network where all the genes are interacting with each other. No gene is acting in isolation. Uh, so we have genes interacting with each other, having effect on each other, they're having relationships with disease, with drugs, and all of these interactions build out the network that ends up being the molecular biology of a cell. So to get closest to biology as possible, a graph is a, is a great use. And when trying to analytically model a graph, Neo4j is a, great, is a great database for that. It allows you to store, query, and analyze Graph data, graph data in a very easy way. And on the right, you can see HetioNet, uh, which is a great example from about five years ago of a biomedical knowledge graph um, that has had a lot of success and is still in good use today. So jumping right into how you can build graph-based features using Neo4j and the query language Cypher. Uh, looking at this first example, if you're a scientist and you're looking at a potential gene for as a druggable target, you want to understand if I, if I drug this target, what other genes are going to be affected downstream of that target. So understanding the number of neighbors of that gene is really important. So you may want to minimize or maximize the number of potential downstream effects of that gene that you're, tar you're targeting. And here's a very simple query that 
that can do that and it shows the benefit benefit of uh, using Neo4j. Coming on from that, a biologist often when they're looking at potential targets for disease, they already have a context that they're trying to understand. So they already know there's a pathway or molecular process that has a disease association. And they're looking for genes that can, uh, that can regulate that pathway and have an effect on the pathway or process uh, for that disease. So this second query uh, is really showing the benefit of using Neo4j where you're able to take pathfinding at two steps. So you're able to say, show me all the genes that interact, upregulate, downregulate genes that participate in this pathway or molecular process. And then return to me the count of those genes. And you can use that as a feature to usually maximize uh, in your recommendation system. Often there are other considerations other than just biological. Uh, so this last query shows a commercial a feature looking at the number of competitors with a trial at stage X or above. For example, you may want to understand if a competitor is already looking at a target for that disease. If they're at clinical trial stage of two or above, you may want to avoid that target and look for something more novel. They're just a few graph-based features and quite simple examples, um, but there are many other features that a scientist may consider in their recommendation system. Uh, for example, gene similarity. So often there's uh, genes that already have a no, well-known association uh, to a disease and you wanna find similar genes uh, that are potential targets for that disease. And Neo4j is a great way to do that uh, because you can generate node embeddings of those genes, uh, which represents like, it represents a model of that gene in the network and you can then compare the similarity of those genes. So if you use the graph data science library by Neo4j, you can create an embedding of uh, gene X and gene Y, and you can run cosine similarity between the two genes. And uh, that cosine similarity, co cosine similarity value can then be used as a feature. You may want to include uh, features for your recommendation system that are not graph-based. So this might include uh, drug ability or tractability, uh, the gene essentiality um, for cell viability. So if I knock out this gene, is it going to cause a cell to die? Um, you want to consider that when reviewing targets for disease and any other third-party disease association scores. So uh, for example, open targets has disease association scores for all target, for all genes. And that may want to be one feature into your recommendation system. Also a great example of a feature you may want to use uh, is any experimental data that you have internally uh, for that disease. So if you've run an RNA-seq internal study and you have differential expression of all the genes for between the healthy and disease state, uh, then you can use that VOG2FC value uh, as a feature in your recommendation system. Once you've generated all your features of interest um, for each gene, so you have a, a list of all the genes that you're looking to consider and all of their associated features, then you can feed that into an optimization model to make a prediction. Uh, if you're looking at a multi-objective multi function uh, model, then you could use something like PIMU or PIOMO, um, and you'll get results similar to the chart you can see there where they will minimize or maximize the features or objectives uh, based on your inputs. You can also use machine learning or deep learning approaches uh, if you have the training data available to you. Often in uh, target discovery, you don't have that. It's very hard to have uh, trusted data for how well a target will perform or how well a drug will perform. But if you have that data and you trust it, then you can use machine learning uh, supervised frameworks such as sklearn or uh, deep learning framework like pytorch and the result of these uh, models will be a prioritized gene list uh, which will give you all of the genes that you've considered and a recommendation score of how well they could fit the disease the phenotype um, drug resistance and all, all these potential things and you can take, at that point, the scientist can then take X 
number that they'd like to review. Uh, rather than the thousands that they would have had to previously review, they could then take 30, 40, 50 genes, uh, review those, and potentially select those for experimental validation. At Crosser, we believe that uh, this process can be automated, um, and we're working to productize this kind of recommendation system for drug discovery uh, on top of using uh, features from Neo4j and other features. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, then please reach out uh, to my email, uh, ben at cross.uk or my LinkedIn or the website, or if you're interested in getting involved as we'll soon be scaling hiring.